It's a great day. Let's sing our song. Arms go up and arms go down. I can turn myself around. I can stand up on one shoe. I can listen, so can you. I can sit, I'll show you how. Story time is starting now. So our stories today are about apples because this is the time of the year that like we've harvested our gardens and we get to pick things. And one of my favorite things to harvest in the fall is fruit, like berries and apples and all those fun things. And this guy right here might have an apple story, the starry giraffe. Can you guys see that? The starry giraffe. There we go. Try that again. The starry giraffe stumbled upon a plump apple tree. She was very hungry. The giraffe searched for the most delicious looking apple and she plucked it off. Just when she opened up to take a big bite, a little brown mouse popped out of his hole. I'm very hungry, he squeaked, but I'm much too little to reach those delicious apples. Here you go, said the giraffe. Thank you, said the mouse, as he moused back into his hole. The starry giraffe turned to find the second most delicious apple on the tree. She picked a round, rosy red one that smelled so good she could just about taste it. When she just about tasted it, tasted it, a family of skunks scurried up. The giraffe presented them each with an apple. The ex excited skunk family jumped all about. All this apple picking made the starry giraffe quite tired. An old gray bunny thumped up. The giraffe gave him an apple. A raccoon followed him. One apple for him. The snake got two. Can you see them in his body? The rhino carried one off in his lunchbox to eat later. The star giraffe was hungrier than ever. Only one lonely apple remained on the tree. She looked around to see if anyone else might arrive. It was all quiet. The giraffe stretched up high and picked the last apple. Then she noticed a tiny inchworm staring up with a hungry face. Worms quite enjoy apples. So she gave him the final one. The giraffe's stomach rumbled. She felt tired and a little sad. After a few moments of rest, the giraffe stood up tall. <laughs> she walked to the next tree and ate 27 apples. That was a pretty good story. Sharing is a really good thing. I bet she felt really great about sharing all those apples with all those friends. I have a second story, but first, I want to ask you, who knows what time of year this is? The time of year when the leaves change colors on the trees, and we just got done harvesting our garden, and the apples are ripe, and it's starting to get cold outside. Hmm, I don't think it's summer. We just had summer. Did I hear someone say it? There's actually two different words you could use for this time of year. One of them is called autumn. We could call this time of year autumn. And the other word for autumn is fall. Yeah, and you can remember that really well because the leaves fall off the trees, don't they? Okay, this is a really great story. 
applesauce day. Who likes apples? I really like apples. How about applesauce? I like applesauce. I think it's pretty yummy. Okay. I spy the big pot on the counter right away. Hooray, I say it's applesauce day. Hannah cheers. Ezra bangs his spoon. After breakfast, we load up the car and drive to the apple orchard just outside the city. Wow, guys, look at all those apples. Looks like there's several different kinds, too. The air smells like ripe apples here. I listen to the quiet. There are no sirens or screeching tires, only the buzzing of bees and the leaves rustling in the wind. I show, whoops, did I skip a page? No, nope, I just skipped some words. Oops, then Hannah calls my name. She's on her tippy toes, tugging at an apple. I show her the trick dad taught me last year. Twist and pull. The apple pops right off. Dad winks at me and we get to work. Mom and dad pick the high apples and Hannah and I pick the low ones. Ezra helps too. Soon the baskets are full of rosy apples, ready to be smooshed into sweet, tangy applesauce. We pack them up and head for Grandma's big, roomy kitchen. Grandma's waiting at the door. Her smile matches mine as she hugs me tight. Ready to make applesauce, she asks. We lug the apple baskets into the kitchen and take our places. This year, Ezra gets to help too. Dad washes the apple, apples and Grandma cuts them into quarters so they'll cook quickly. Snick, snick, snick. Ezra drops the apple quarters into the big steel pot. Thunk, thunk, thunk. It's heavy and wide with lots of apples. The perfect pot for applesauce, Grandma says. It looks like a regular pot to me. As we work, Mom tells us how she helped Grandma carry bushels of apples home from the market in their quiet Ohio town and how they cooked them in this very pot when she was a little girl. Grandma tells us how she helped her mother pick apples from the old apple tree behind their house on the windy Iowa prairie and how they too cooked them in this pot when she was a little girl. I look at the pot again. I wonder how many apples it has cooked and what kind of stories it could tell if pots could talk. Soon the warm scent of cooking apples fills the air. Their skins fade to pink as the apples melt into mush. Every now and then an air bubble rises to the surface. Blurp. 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 Mom scoops the hot apple mush into the food mill. Hannah and I take turns cranking the handle and pressing the apples into the funnel at the top. Crank, squish, crankety, squish. Applesauce squishes through the strainer and flows like a river into the pan waiting below. Peels and seeds drop out the end into a bowl. Well, that is kind of a handy little device, isn't it? I dip my finger into the applesauce for a taste. It's so sweet, it doesn't really need any sugar but we add a little anyway. Then we scoop the applesauce into containers. By now, our stomachs are rumbling. Grandma sets out a plate of sandwiches and a big bowl of warm applesauce. She sprinkles cinnamon on top. Mmm. We all take heaping helpings and then seconds, Ezra licks his bowl. Then we get back to work, cutting and cooking and cranking and cranking. Crank, squish, crankity, squish. Until the baskets are empty and the containers are full. We fill grandma's freezer and pack the rest in our car. Finally, we say our goodbyes and head for home, tired and sticky, but full of stories and smiles and applesauce. The car grows quiet. I run my finger over the scratches in the old metal pot. Someday, I think when I grow up, I will cook apples in this very special pot on applesauce day. How fun. Have you guys ever made 
anything out of apples, like applesauce? What about apple pie? What else can you make with apples? Apple cake? I like to eat my apples with cheese. Do you? Hmm. Apples are one of my favorite foods, I think. Do you like red or green or yellow? There's a lot of different kinds of apples, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, and they all taste a little bit different. Okay, I have our last story and then I'll show you a fun art project you can do with apples. That'll be cool. So this one is called Hungry Bunny. Okay. Hungry Bunny. Here I come. Grr, grr. Can you hear my tummy rumble? I'm one hungry bunny. Grr, grr. It's time for a red, delicious, and hard to reach apple. Um, maybe you could help. Can you shake the book so the apples fall down? Shall we shake the book, guys? What do you think? Did it work? Um, not the leaves. Could you blow them away? Okay, everybody, blow on the book. Huh, that's much better. Thank you. Oh no, my scarf has blown away too. It's stuck in the book. And I'm still hungry. Can you help me grab my scarf? Grab the scarf, guys. Let's pull it down. Hmm. Will you place the scarf here for me and hold it tight? I can use it to climb. There we go. I got the scarf. He's going to use it to climb the tree and pick the tasty apples. Oh, just one more. Great teamwork. I got them all. Can you hang on to that scarf for me? Hang on to that scarf. We got it. Okay. Whoops. I'm running late. What an uphill battle. I bet it's harder to pull the wagon full of apples. Wait a minute. Why am I going uphill? We can fix that. Can you tilt the book for me? Is he going downhill now? Easy as pie. Now my wheels are turning. Why don't we have even more fun? Would you rock the book back and forth? Let's see what happens. Ha, zowie, keep going and get ready to turn. Whoa, oh man. That looked crazy. Uh-oh, get ready to tumble. Oops, I guess I upset the apple cart. Where are all the apples? Huh, here they are. I'll just pick these up. On the road again. But what's this? Uh-oh. Hey, I'm going to need some help. Can you use my scarf to make a bridge? Let's see if we can do that. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Can we do it? There we go. Do you think he'll make it? Let's see. Perfect. Thank you. I'm at the end of my rope. Good thing I'm almost home. Um, I'm stuck. Can you push, please? Give him a push. Give him a push. Pop. Right on time for mom's apple pie. Not a bad apple in the bunch. And we saved a piece 
just for you. That was kind of fun. So I don't have a big apple today. I have a little apple though, and I wanna show you a trick. So normally when you have an apple, you cut it like this, right? And you cut it into quarters to eat it. If you turn it on its side, so that there's the bottom and there's the top, and you cut it like this, there's something really, really cool inside. Can you guys see that? It's like a star. Did you know that about apples? You'll have to have mom or dad cut an apple for you if you have one at your house. And then the really fun thing is you can dip it in paint. And let me show you this cool, look at that star that I made with an apple. Okay. So here's our project I'm going to show you. You're going to need a piece of paper. And you're going to want to draw a tree, the trunk and the branches, okay? And then you can cut out some leaves and glue them on. Or you can draw some leaves like these. Draw some leaves on there. And then you can use an apple that's cut in half like that and dip it in paint and make yourself some really cool star apples for your apple tree. Friends, I am so glad to be back to share stories with you today, and I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that I get to see you again next week. Bye for now.